Then Logic 0.8 is out. Let's go through all the changes one by one. First, I move the theme editor tool icon to the left. I felt like on the right it was a little bit disconnected from the others and could be easily missed. On the theme editor, I added a color background as an option. You can now add solid colors as backgrounds. Before you can only do images, but now you can pick any color. So if you want to do it plain and simple, you can do that now. I've reduced the vertical size needed to show all the options. You can now style your choice buttons. You can change the color, the background, and many other things. So you can make your patterns look better. Timeline editor. I moved the event buttons to a new column on the right. When creating a question event, two choice events and an end branch will be added automatically since it's probably what you want to add. And if you want to add more options, you can do so by clicking on the choice event. I added a warning for the choice events that are at the root level. Since they have to be linked with a question, you might left that choice there or maybe you don't know exactly how the system will work and you first click on choice, it will notify you and tell you that the choices need to be inside questions. I disabled some unfinished events. This will be probably enabled later, but so you know what events are currently working, the ones that are not are disabled. The change timeline event now tells you in which timeline you are. So if you want to change to the same one, which will go back to the beginning of the timeline, you now have an easier way of recognizing which one you're working in. A new event, closed dialog, has been added and this event will close the dialog whenever it's called. When renaming the dialog before, you had to select the text and modify it, so now it's automatically selected and you can start typing right away. In-game dialog updates. The change timeline event is now working. You can now select the timeline from the inspector without manually copying the timeline ID. I would really like to thank these two from the Godot Discord server because they helped me in making this. It was a bit more tricky than I expected, but it's fully working now. The audio event can play sounds in-game. The character join on the position left, center and right is working. Focus in and out of portraits when speaking is enabled again. Characters leave events are working. Basic questions and answers is already supported and you can see it here. A better scene resizing and position has been added so you can be sure that the dialogue will always show in the same place. And the button styles that you set from the theme editor are gonna be visible in-game as well. I would really like to thank all my Patreons and especially the ones that are joining recently because of Dialogic. I really appreciate it. And if you guys want me to work on something in particular, please, you can leave your suggestions in the comments. I would like to know more about the projects that you're going to be using Dialogic in because I've seen a lot of people telling me that they're going to use it in several kinds of games. So I would like to know what other features might be useful for you to keep adding on the plugin. Thanks again and see you guys next time.